All right. Um, that hasn't been good in years. Oh, SNL. Did you see the Babylon Post? Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the them all off. Yeah. I'm going to have to see that. Uh, in, in protest, uh, Saturday Night Live actually hired somebody that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're a force to, <laughs> to, uh, for equity, you know, all that stuff. All right, we are going to continue on in our uh, Bible study. We'll open up in prayer, and then we'll uh, go from there. So, uh, um, so we will be in Genesis... 42, and continuing on. Um, so last week, when we left off, we talked about how Joseph was, uh, everybody was coming, everybody all over the earth, in verse 57 of uh, 41, um, everyone all over the earth came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph. And we talked a little bit about, that was another one of the Christological importances about Joseph's life. Yeah, as a picture of, of who Jesus is and would be. And so they had to come there in order to be sustained um, from the uh, famine of the world. So starting in verse 1 of chapter 42, um, Joseph was uh, um, placed, if you remember, he's placed in, in a place of power, and uh, he was a wise guy. He was wise, and, and uh, God had given him, I think, the supernatural wisdom, and he said, this is what you need to do in order for you to get through these seven years, because there's going to be seven good years, and then seven famine years that are going to take and destroy all that good stuff. Um, so he gave him a plan, and the guy's like, hey, why don't you do it? Pharaoh's just, this is uh, something that you should do, because you're, you actually, got, you're the man with the plan. So again, we talked about, we'll be talking more about it. Um, when we're talking about the uh, people of God, we're going to be talking more about God's favor. This has been a big, uh, it's been a big topic throughout all of Genesis that we've gone through, where we've seen over and over and over again, even in their failures, we've seen God's favor play itself out over and over and over again. And so it's one of those things that um, is a good thing. Um, when we think about so, um, and we should all be encouraged about that because, and uh, as I was talking with uh, my son uh, a few days ago, uh, we were talking about this about you know God's favor, and it's a, and I mentioned to him that when we're going through uh, Genesis as we're going through there, the favor of God that we see in these men that are failures, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, um, and all these things, and yet we see God's favor, and so that is an encouraging thing to us because we fail. All of us do. And God, when we're, um, as we uh, said Monday, um, a few times, more than once, when God is pleased with uh, man's ways, even his enemies are at peace with him. God's favor pours out. And so, um, um, even in those dark circumstances. So starting in verse 1 of chapter 42. Now Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, and uh, Jacob said to his sons, Why are you staring at one another? Interesting question. Um, and he said, Behold, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down, therefore, and buy some grain for us uh, from that place, so that we may live and not die. Then the ten brothers of Joseph went down to buy grain from Egypt. Why only ten? Why only ten brothers? Because one of his sons has already gone, and he didn't want to lose uh, the youngest. Correct. Yeah. So... Uh, um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the youngest. Yeah. So the ten brothers go. These are the older boys. Now, uh, but Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, "I'm afraid that harm may befall him." And that's last time I sent my one boy to brothers, he ended up dead. And Jacob still thinks that he's dead. So that's that's why he's saying, "I'm not going to send this one with you guys." So there's a little bit of that. He, he's had a long memory. And so it says in verse 5, So the sons of Israel came to buy grain among those who were coming. For, uh, for the family was in the land of Canaan also. Or famine was in the land uh, of Canaan also. Now Joseph was the ruler over the land, and he was the one who sold to all the people of the land. 
And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. If you remember it's from... Green. Yeah. It's green. I want to read that real quick. Um, just that little uh, portion. Where it, yeah, it's in 37. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Where it says that uh, uh, in verse 5 of chapter 37... Uh, Joseph had a, then Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. And he said to them, Please listen to this dream, which I have had. Uh, for behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaves rose up and also stood erect. And behold, your sheaves gathered around and bowed down to my sheaf. Uh, then his brothers said to him, Are we actually, are you actually going to reign over us? Are you really going to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his, uh, for his words. And um, so we're back to here in 42. They go to Egypt um, to Joseph. And Joseph's brothers in verse 6 says that they came and bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Now they had no idea who they were bound for. So they were just... Doing what they thought was well, protocol. No, but they have that clue. Um, let's listen to what it says. It says, When Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them. But he disguised himself to them and spoke to them harshly and said to them, Where have you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. But Joseph had recognized his brothers, although they did not recognize him. And Joseph remembered the dream which he had had about them, and said to them, You are spies. You have come to look at the uh, undefended parts of our land. Then they said to him, No, my lord, but, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. Yeah. 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 That's questionable. Well, I'm honored here. Yeah. Yeah. Some of their honesty. Yeah. They, uh, they seemingly forgot about, uh, and they had no clue. So they're unfolding this story. Um, and it says, but they said, your servants are 12 brothers in all. So that's a good thing. They did, they did count them. Yeah, they did count them. And he's still part of the family as far as they're concerned. Uh, because they know something that his dad, that their dad doesn't. Um, the servants are twelve brothers in all, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. And Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, you are spies. By this you will be tested, by the life of Pharaoh. You shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. And why do you suppose that he's asking for his youngest brother? Because he knows his dad doesn't, doesn't know that he's alive and obviously from his brother. Yeah, and the other thing is, to keep and in mind, he knows, what their, he knows what their uh, character is. Mm he's -hmm. like, is my brother really alive? Yeah. Here they just said, you know, we have, there's 12 of us. One is no more, but, you know. Um, so it's, it's kind of that, it could be very well that he's... Uh, doing some some psyops with them. And, uh, well, maybe he just wants to get the dad to come so mm -hmm. doing some sleuth on his own. Well, he's 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 uh, he's unfolding the uh, the will of God, and that's what's really going on here. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, Joseph said, it is, "It is as I said, you are spies. By by this you will be tested. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go from this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you." Uh, that he may get your brother while you remain confined, that your words may be tested, whether there is truth in you. But if not, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all in prison for three days. It's interesting how many times we see that so far in Genesis. Three, three days. days. It's an important, important thing. Come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. one is. Yeah. So, uh, um, verse 18. Now, Joseph said to them, on the third day... Do this and live, for I fear God. Now he's speaking their language, something that they should understand. Um, he says, if you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined in your prison. But as, you, as for the uh, rest of you, go, carry grain for the famine of your households, and bring your youngest brother to me, 
so your words may be verified, and you will not die. And they did so. But I'll let you go, but here's a, here's a condition. One of them is going to stay behind. Um, verse 21. Um, and they said to one another, Truly we are guilty concerning our brother, because we saw the distress of his soul when he pleaded with us. Yet we would not listen. Therefore, this distress has come upon us. So now they're feeling the weight of it, the guilt that now hit them. And they're remembering now, they're reminded, man, when we did this, he was pleading with us, don't do this, don't do this. Um, and listen to what Reuben says. Reuben answered and saying, did I not tell you, do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. So now they're going, ah. Uh, this is payback. I told you so. Yeah. Hold on to this. But they did. And then it says, verse 24, And he turned away from them and wept. But when he had returned to them he and spoke to them. So a um, couple of things. Um, Joseph here, in the, there's a, the shortest um, verse in the Bible. He wept. He wept. Yeah. Jesus wept. Yeah. He wept. And that's a, this is another way that you can slightly see that he's having compassion for his brothers. They're actually telling the truth, and now they're, he's feeling their guilt. And so he's having empathy. He's been apart from his family for so long, and now that this is unfolding, um, he couldn't hold back the tears, so he took off and hit himself, and then came back when he was more composed. Yeah. So this is like an ex example of one of those Christophers? Uh, you say that word? Yeah. yeah the kind of, yeah. It's, it shows his compassion, even though they're guilty. It shows the compassion that he has for them. And in other words, he's not holding their guilt against them. Um, it's not time for that ultimate judgment. So that's one of the ways that we can see that, that, that he's like Christ. So he's, he's calling out their sin, basically. And they're admitting it now. And now he's, uh, 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 he's responding with the uh, long-held emotions. Um, and it says, uh, uh, but when he returned to them, the, uh, verse 24, and, and spoke to them, he took Simon, or Simeon, excuse me, from them and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph gave orders to fill their, their bags with grain and to restore every man's money in his sack and to give them provision for the, for the journey. And thus it was done for them. You think they would have kind of figured something out that that, uh, that they were treated so well after being sent, um, but they were uh, uh, a little bit clueless. Um, and so uh, Joseph is playing; um, he's planning something that is uh, in his mind, and this is the reason why he's doing this. So they loaded in verse twenty-six. They loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed from there. And as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging, excuse me, lodging place, he saw his money. And behold, it was in the mouth of the sack. Then he said to his brothers, My money has been returned, and behold, it is even in my sack. And their hearts sank, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? So that guilt is carrying over. Now they're saying, God's paying us back. <laughs> Because they have their money back, so they they know that, man, if we get caught, they're going to accuse us of stealing this stuff. Um, so they're, uh, they're, now, they're, now they're afraid. Verse 29, when they came to the father, or to their father Jacob, in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, the man, the Lord of the land, spoke harshly with us and took us for spies of the country. But we said to him, we are honest men. We are not spies. We are told brothers, sons of our fathers, uh, our father, one is no more, and the youngest is with our father today in the land of Canaan. And the man, the Lord of the land, said to us, by this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the famine uh, of your household, and go. But bring me your youngest brother to me, that I may know that you are not spies, but honest men, I will give you your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Um, so that's the condition that he made with them. Now they're back in Canaan. Verse 35. 
And now it came about, as they were emptying their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle was of money was in his sack. And when, the, when they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were dismayed. So they're totally confused. What in the world is going on? Um, and it says in verse 36, And their father Jacob said to them, You have bereaved me of my children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more. And you would take Benjamin? All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, You may put my two sons to death if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my care, and I will return him to you. But Jacob said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone is left. If harm should befall him, or yeah, should befall him on the journey you are taking, then you will bring my gray hair down to Sheol in sorrow. Is he talking about Simeon? I'm trying to understand. No, Simeon he's talking about the one that's saved, yeah. so he thinks he's dead. Yeah, he's like he's <coughs> he's gone now, and so he's like you we be able of two of my children now. So. Oh. Well, wait. So did they? Is this the second trip they're making up? So. No, this is the first. That's the, that's the return of the first. So they went, uh, they're going to make a second trip. And then, so, because I thought he said that he was going to send one back. No, he was going to keep one. And they were going to go. The, but, and then he's gotta, they got to bring back Benjamin. Right, Simeon, I thought that, but there Ruben was one before that. Ruben said that he's going to go. What's that? And then I caught what there is before where he said, oh, um, you'll do, or I will, I will send, I will he said that one of you would go to get your the youngest brother and then bring him back. Right, one of them. He held him in prison for three days. Yeah, and then, then he came in. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he flipped yeah. yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. He said, yeah. one of you will stay. The rest can go get yeah. the grain and take it And he got yeah. Simeon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, that will happen. So in uh, chapter 30, uh, 43, it says, Now the famine was severe in the land. And so it came about when they had finished eating the grain, which they had uh, brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. Judah spoke to him, however, saying, The man solemnly warned us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. Because remember, he said that, I swear by Pharaoh. So it was a serious deal, a serious matter. Um, if you send our brother uh, with us, we will go down to buy food. But if you do not send him, we will not go down. For the man said to us, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. So they're, they're, they're uh, uh, laying down the gauntlet. So in the meantime, Simeon's still back there. <laughs> he's still back there. He's in prison. Yeah, he's been there. While they're yeah. He's been there when? How long? How no, long? We're, we're, not, we're, not, yeah. <laughs> we're not sure exactly. Remember, Joseph spent uh, what, three years, I think we figured about two, two to three years there in prison himself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this was a little, you know, a little time compared in comparison. I don't think it was years. So, um, yeah, eight. And it says, and Judah said to his father, uh, well, actually, verse seven, the man questioned particularly about us and, and our relatives, or excuse me, six. We're, we're, in, we're in verse six. And then Israel, who's Jacob, said, why did you treat me so badly by telling the man whether you still had another brother? But they said, the man questioned particularly about us and our relatives, saying, is your father still alive? Have you another brother? So we answered his questions. Could we possibly know that he would say, bring your brother down? And Judah said to his father Israel, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go that we may live and not die, we as well as our little ones, we as, and you and our little ones. I myself will be surety for him. You may hold uh, me responsible for him if I do not bring him back to you and to set him before you, then let me be, bear the blame before you. Um, for if we do, or if we had not delayed, surely by now we would have, uh, or we could have returned twice. So, pretty good amount of time. <clears throat> Could have been there and back twice already. Now, what's important about here, about this detail, 
Now it's Judah. And the line of the Messiah has to come through Judah. He's laying down his life. Saying, take my life if I don't return with him. So this is one of those pictures where we see through the line of Judah. It's not necessarily a Christophany, but it is a uh, picture here, right? Because remember, Reuben had offered, now Judah is offering. And then uh, verse 11, Then their fathers, uh, Israel, said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the best of the land in your bags, carry down to the man as a present, a little balm, a little honey, aromatic gum, and myrrh, pistachio nuts, and uh, almonds. And take double the money in your hand. Take back in your hand the money that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was a mistake. So they're still a little bit suspicious. They're like, just give them the double the amount of money and, and uh, hopefully everything. Plus all these other stuff. And hopefully everything will be all right. And then he says in verse 13, Take your brother also and arise. Return to the man. So this would have been a really hard thing for Israel to do. He's relinquishing his youngest son, and he's saying, you know, he's weighing the, do, do, do I let my whole family die, or do I just get this over with, see what happens. And then he says in verse 14, and this is one of the places where um, he again, um, he adjures to God and says, and may God Almighty, El Shaddai, grant you compassion to the sight of the man, that he may release you. To you, your, your other brother, and Benjamin, and as for me, if I am bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So he settled, and he's finally got to the place where he's going to trust God. It's up to God. After all, it's all up to God. So whatever he decides to do, that's what's going to happen. Um, so uh, he just says, take the take boy and go. And verse 15, so the men took this present, and they... They took double the money in their hand, and Benjamin. Then they um, arose and went down to Egypt and saw him before and stood before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with him with them, he said to his house steward, Bring the men into the house, and slay an animal, and make ready, for the men are to dine with me at noon. So he sacrifices a uh, they're gonna have a big old feast. Um, so the man did as Joseph said, and brought the men to Joseph's house. Now, the men were afraid, because they were brought to Joseph's house. They said, it is because of the money that was returned in our sacks the first time that we are being brought in, that he may seek occasion against us, and fall upon us, and take us for slaves with our donkeys. So they think they're doomed. They're doomed. We're stuck here. We're going to be slaves. So they came near to Joseph's house, steward, and spoke to him at the entrance of the house, and said, O my Lord, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. And it came about when we came to the lodging place that we opened our sacks, and behold, each man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money is in full. So we have brought it back in our hand. And we also brought down other monies um, in our hands to buy food. We do not know who put our money in our sacks. And he said, Be at ease. Don't be afraid. Your God, now this is the servant, this is an Egyptian servant who's come to know Joseph. And he says, Your God, the God of your father, has given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. Um, then he brought uh, Simeon out to them. Then the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet, and he gave their donkeys water. So they prepared the present for Joseph's coming at noon, for they heard that they were to eat a meal there. When Joseph came home, um, they brought him to the house, they brought him into the house uh, to him to present which was in their hand. Let me start reading that. When Joseph came home, they brought into the house to him the present, which was in their hand, and bowed to the ground before him. Then he asked them about their welfare, and said, Is your old father well, of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? 
And they said, Your servant, our father, is well, and he is alive. They bowed down in homage. Kissed the son, lest he become angry. And he lifted his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and he said, Is this your youngest brother, of whom you spoke to me? And he said, May God be gracious to you, my son. And Joseph hurried out of where he was deeply stirred over his brother. And he sought a place to weep. And he entered his chamber and wept there. That is a very tender moment. He sees his brother. These guys are actually learned their lesson. They are honest. And so he's, uh, he's overwhelmed. So he goes and finds a place again to cry and then compose himself. Then verse 31, Then he washed his face and came out, and he controlled himself and said, Serve the meal. So they served uh, him by himself, uh, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves. So it sounds like there were three areas in the house where they all ate separately. Like the restaurant? Yeah, they were at the kids' table. The kids table. <laughs> Uh, because the Egyptians could not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is loathsome to the Egyptians. Wow, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's not their people, and they... It's, it's like they have the segregation. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, in, in then verse 33, Now they were seated before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth. And the men looked at one another in astonishment. But they're going, wait a minute. How does he know what order to set us in? Yeah. So, a little clue that there's something going on here. And he took portions to them from his own table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs. So they feasted and drank freely with him. Is Benjamin the youngest? Yeah. So he was born after Joseph. Mm-hmm. Okay. I hope so. Was, 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 was Joseph that people were going to Muslim? No, I to get to this. Was Benjamin already born when they, Joseph got put in prison? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, so Joseph was 17, so his little brother would have been probably not even a teenager yet. So, um, we probably get one of them about chapter 44. Then he commanded his house steward, saying, Fill the man's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the younger, and his money for the grain. And he did as, uh, as Joseph told him. As soon as it was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had just gone out of the city, and were not far off, when Joseph said to his House steward, up, follow the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, why have you repaid evil for good? He said, them up. He says, brother, leave me. Yeah, yeah. Like his payback. Just a, just a prank, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is not this the one from which my Lord drinks, and which he indeed uses for divinations? But that's a weird thing right there. He uses for divinations. And it might be having something to do with his dreams. I don't know. Um, it doesn't really tell us. It just says it's, it's this particular cup that belongs to Joseph. So it says, you have done wrong in doing this. So in verse 6, so he overtook them and spoke these words to them. And they said to him, why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in the mouth of our sacks, we have brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever your servant it is found, let him die. (laughs) (laughs) And we also will be my Lord's slave. Now they're coming, they're they're actually, you know, speaking from an innocent place. They're like, we didn't do this. This isn't us. So they have no clue what's going on. Um, and so they said, whoever has it, let them, let them be, let them die. So he said in verse 10, now let it also be according to your words with, uh, he with whom it is found shall be my slave and the rest of you shall be innocent. 
Then they hurried, each man lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the oldest and ending with the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. And then they tore their clothes, and when each man had loaded his donkey, they returned to the city. They're undone. Wait, I thought they said they're going to keep the youngest, or the one that stole it. Well, they had to go back and make amends, so there's more drama to unfold. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> so Benjamin was one who had it, um, just as uh, just as Joseph had the plan, and um, he's, he's playing chess while they're still stuck with checkers. Um, <laughs> Or maybe Jacks, pick up Jacks. Uh, 14, when Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. And they fell to the ground before him. Now they're really humbling themselves. And Joseph said to them, what is this deed that you have done? Do you not know that such a man as I can indeed practice divination? Now he's putting the hex on them. He's really freaking them out. Um... And then he says in verse 16, So Judah said, What can we say to my Lord? What can we speak? And how can we justify ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's slaves, both we and the one in whose possession the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it from me to do this. The man in whose possession the cup has been found, he shall be my slave. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah approached him and said, Oh, my Lord, may your servant speak. Please speak uh, a word in my Lord's ear. And do not be angry with your servant, for you are equal to Pharaoh. Now he's really buttering me. It's a a good thing. He's he's humbled here. My Lord asks his servants, saying, "Have Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, we have an old father and a little child of his old age. Now his brother is dead. So he alone is left of his mother. And his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on on him. But we said to my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, however, unless your youngest brothers come up, or come down with you, you shall not see my face again. Thus it came about when we went up to your servants, uh, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, go back, buy us a little food. But we said, we cannot go down if our youngest brother is, uh, if uh, our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down. Um, For we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. And your servant, my father, said to us, You know that my wife bore, my, bore me two sons. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I have not seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm befalls him, you will bring my gray uh, hair down to Sheol in sorrow. Now, therefore, where I, when I come to your servant, my father, and the lad is not with us, since his life is bound up in the lad's life. It will come about when he sees that the lad is not with us, that he will die. Thus your servants will bring the gray hair of your servant, our father, down to Sheol in sorrow. For your servant became surety for the lad to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, then let me bear the blame before my father forever. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the lad, a slave to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brothers. For how shall I go up to my father if the lad is not with me? Lest I see the evil that I would overtake, that would overtake my father. So now he's saying, take me instead. Take me in place of him, and don't let me go to, you know, don't let us go back to our father without him. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's what they're saying is that is that um, uh, and, and Joseph has is, is got something in, uh, in. Let's read a little bit further here in, in forty five. We've yeah. got enough time. Yeah. It says then Joseph could not control himself. So now all the games are going to be uh, up. Now the game is going to be up. 
that Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried, Have everyone go out from me. So there was no man with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the household of Pharaoh heard it, heard of it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. But it's exclamation. I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Please, come closer to me. And they came closer, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into, uh, into Egypt. And now do not be grieved or angry with yourself, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. Now that was the whole purpose. The dreams, the being sold, all of this, it was all for the, uh, it was all to serve, all of it was to serve, serve the purpose. Yep. The purpose of God. All of it was ultimately for God's glory. And so Joseph is saying, that's what this is all about. This is what God has allowed. Um, verse 5, uh, I'll read that again. Now, um, he says, Now do not be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. So he's under the, the uh, understanding that this was all God's doing. God sent me here to preserve life. God knew this was going to happen. He told about me about it in the dream. This couldn't have happened if I wouldn't have been here, if I wouldn't have been a prisoner, if I wouldn't have been a servant of, of Potiphar. If none of this would have happened, I, I wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be able to have food for our families. This family would have been, you know, we would have killed everybody. Um, then he says in verse 6, For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to prepare, uh, to preserve for you a remnant in the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Remember what we were talking about in Isaiah. God always, God will always have a remnant. Nothing will ever be truly taken off the face of the earth. None of his believers, no. His people will never be. Because it's our destiny, ultimately, to rule the earth. That's what his intention is. That's what started in Genesis, if you remember, from the very beginning, the six things. God blessed Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion over it. And that's what God intended for his people. And he's always had that intention. And that's ultimately what will happen. So God will always have a remnant no matter what. No matter how many people die. And some of those people will be the children of God. But no matter how many, there's always going to be a, remain a remnant. There's always going to be a small amount of people um, amongst all the people that God will always have. And this is what he's saying. This was for God's purpose in verse 8. And he has made me the father... Um, uh, excuse me, verse 7, for he, God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant in the earth and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. This is another way that uh, Joseph is like Jesus. Jesus was sent to deliver. We're going to be talking about deliverance and deliverer more in Exodus. So, Joseph, like Jesus, he's a deliverer. He's delivered his people from death by God sending him ahead of, uh, of everybody and putting all this into play. And Joseph is saying, this is the reason why. Verse 8, Now therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his household, and ruler over the land of Egypt. This, again, is... God's favor. So Joseph suffered and did all the stuff. He went through all the things he did, and it was all for God's favor. He was pouring out God's favor on Joseph as a deliverer, and it just took time. 
to play out all the parts and do all the things. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but I love the fact that the way that uh, Chapter 45, I think in the original that was just a continuation of this, the story. It wasn't a good break there um, because it flowed right into this next uh, part of the story rather than, you know, how sometimes we'll jump into a totally different weird story that you're going like, how does this fit in here? But here it flows right in. And I think part of that purpose is to show how Joseph, like Jesus, is a, uh, he's not only a deliverer, they both are compassionate. So he has the compassion for his brother and uh, his brothers, and they get to, uh, uh, he gets to express it, and he gets to tell them all. But imagine the elation in their minds after their, like, man. And that, uh, think about the, uh, the positive and the negative. This is Joseph, he's alive. And not just conviction, but fear. He's not just alive. He's got power to kill us if he wants. And justification for and, Yeah, yeah. And so we're going to see that love overlooks, or not overlooks, but it, uh, it covers a multitude of sin. And his love is what is being displayed here, his compassion. And so he said, this was all God's plan. God is the one who sent me here. He's the one who made me a father to Pharaoh. Um, in verse 8, in the Lord over his house to rule over all the land of Egypt. And he says this in verse 9, Hurry, go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. And you shall live in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near me. You and your children, your children's children, and your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will also provide for you. For there are still five years of famine to come. Lest you and your household and all that you have be impoverished. Again, this is going to be a display of God's favor. The land of Goshen was one of the richest uh, places in all of Egypt. And so the Egyptians are going to let them have this land. It's the most rich place as far as it's, it's fertile with all kinds of lush greenery for their, for their flocks and all that. They can thrive. And God has already set all this stuff up into motion. And he's already telling them, this is what's going to happen. You go get Dad, bring him back. And you guys are going to live here, and you're going to prosper. It says there's still five more years. We've gone through two years. Now we're going to go through five more years. So go get everybody and, and come on. Come on down. And then he says uh, in verse 11, there, will all, there also I will provide for you. Um, for there are still five years of famine to come, lest you and your household and all that you have be impoverished. And he says verse 12, And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth which is speaking to you. Now, you must tell my father of all my splendor in Egypt, and of all that you uh, have seen, and you must hurry and bring my father down here. I want to stop a second, and I want us to turn to John chapter 17. Because <coughs> here you see Joseph, He's uh, he says, tell my dad of all the stuff that's going to... God has done for me. Um, in John chapter seventeen, this is the uh, this is the real Lord's prayer. Um, and in John chapter seventeen, we read what Jesus is praying to the Father um, as he's praying. And this is uh, this would be up in the upper room, um, right before he was uh, um, betrayed. He's praying this way, and in verse 20, he says, he's talking about all the things that he's praying for the, for the uh, soon-to-be apostles. He says in verse 20, I do not ask on behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst send me. And this is, this is what I wanted to focus a little bit more on. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them that they may be one, just as, as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, and they, that they might, may be perfected in unity, that the world may know that thou didst send me, and didst love them as thou didst love me. Father, I desire they, that they also, 
who thou hast given me, be with me where I am, in order that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou didst love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, although the world has not known thee, yet I have known thee, and these have known that thou didst send me. And I have made thy name known to them, and will make it known, that the love wherewith thou didst love me may be in them, and I in them. The reason I read that, it's the same kind of language that Joseph is using. I want my dad to see my glory. And it's the same thing. This, these brothers have seen the glory that he has now. And he says, make sure you tell Dad about this. That, that this is who I am. This is, this is what I've become. This is what God has done. It's an amazing thing. Let's see. Um, and then he, let's, let's get to, we'll finish with, uh, uh, we'll read up to verse 16 and then we'll pick up there next week. Um, and then it says, um, uh, now you must tell my father, verse 13, you must tell my father of all my splendor in Egypt and all that you have seen and you must hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept on them. And afterward his brothers talked with him. So here you see a few things. You see forgiveness. You see redemption. You see reconciliation. You see all these things. And these all have to do with what Jesus came to do. And it's, it's Joseph acting out in this way. He's not holding it all against him. He's like, and we haven't even gotten to the famous line yet. But it's, it's the idea. He's like, this is all God's plan, guys. Everything that's happened. To you, to me, it's all part of God's plan. He's got it all under control. He has worked providentially. You didn't know it, but this is what, what happened. And, um, and so he, he passionately, they, they uh, kiss one another as, uh, as brothers that haven't seen each other in who knows how many years. Um, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's at least three because he's in jail. <laughs> it's like a secret. It's, it's been two yeah. years. Yeah. So it's it's been a while. Yeah. So so they uh, um, and they they thought he was they didn't know what happened to him. They they just assumed he was dead. And so now they they're thinking that he was dead. But now all of a sudden. Is another Christophany alive? Yeah, he's alive. That's a Christophany. Yeah. Why would they assume he was dead when they sold him into slavery? Slaves, huh? How well is a slave going to be treated in a total foreign place, especially a young young boy? And he's a good-looking kid. It says that if you remember, yeah. he was he was a good-looking guy, and he was well. They told their dad that he was dead, so they that sort of been that's the word in their yeah. household. He's dead. Yeah. So they yeah. just get that, and you know, like the leftists do. So the more you tell the same, yeah. 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 But now this is a just a kind of a picture of a. A death and a resurrection. Because all of a sudden he's alive. Not only is he alive, he wants them to go and bring the dead down and um, so that they can live. They can have life in the midst of all the things. nicest spot. Yeah. In the best in the best of best. So it's all just a picture of things that are going to come and things that look that, that God has uh, uh, prophetically said that will happen at some certain time in the future. We don't know how long. It could be 10 years from now. It could be 10,000 years from now. We don't know. We just know that God works out all these things, and he's always working on behalf of his people. And his favor is always what is uh, always being poured out and always being displayed amongst his remnant. Um, just like I said this last Sunday, you know, I shared with you guys the favor of God towards my son, for his, his uh, tuition is paid for. He got the scholarship. And uh, oh, you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He, was, he called last Thursday and he said, Dad, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And uh, and he he got the scholarship, so um, his tuition's paid for. That's so, so he'll leave with very little debt. Um, and it's just, and I told him, I said, Son, that's just God's Amen. So we've been praying hard for you, and uh, so.
But this is all what this is all about. It's all about Jesus ultimately, and it's all about His what He came to, what He was going to come to do. And so um, that's God's plan ultimately. But this is part of the story that God uses. Um, at the time, it was just an account. For thousands of years, it was just an account. But now, with twenty twenty hindsight, now we can see being who we are in the times that we are with the New Testament. We can look back and say, this was God showing all along what he's going to do. He's going to send the king. He's going to be killed. He's going to live. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to give everything to you. It's just an amazing picture of how Joseph's life is one of the most incredible pictures of, uh, of Christ's life. And the way that he was betrayed by his brothers. And now they're reconciled, they're forgiven, and, and all these things. And they did nothing to deserve it. It's just another picture of God's grace, which belongs up here. Ultimately, it's a picture of God's grace here. Because <clears throat> they absolutely do not deserve it, the forgiveness, the redemption, the reconciliation. But it's just God's grace. It's like and Joseph. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we know what they actually do deserve. Yeah. What they did. Yeah. Which is yeah. beautiful. And it's not only, not only was it removed and forgotten about and forgiven, but I'm going to give you stuff on top of it. It's... It's, it's a picture of salvation. So that's just an, an amazing thing. Questions, comments? There is, yeah. Let's close in prayer. Father, how wonderful that you are. What a glorious God that we serve. It's no wonder, Lord, when we think about how good that you are, that we do uh, oftentimes get uh, very emotional um, because of your grace, because of the wonder and splendor of your love for us. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you, Father, for your healing and for all that you give. And we have so much more to look forward to. One day we will look upon the face of the King. And it will not be for condemnation, but it will be for an eternity of enjoyment, of joy. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for these amazing stories that are written so that we may know you. And it really, that's what it is, a reflection of your love your graciousness and your kindness and compassion. How we thank you for Jesus. How we thank you for these lives that, that reflect those things. You are so good to us, Lord. We pray that you would get us home safely, Lord, and that we would sleep comfortably and, and peaceably, knowing that you are, are our, our great Redeemer and our Deliverer and our uh, Forgiver of our sins. Thank you for all of these things, for your grace. Thank you for Jesus. In his holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.